everyone welcome back to another video i just finished training hence why we are here at the circus but welcome to part three i think it is of how to start a star stable youtube channel today we are looking at how i create my thumbnails i'm going to be completely honest with you guys and tell you that i'm actually like not super happy with my thumbnails i think that so many other people have better thumbnails than me so like this is just how i do it this is just like kind of like the basic basics to photoshop which is what i use but you can use whatever as well i'm also going to be telling you guys some other programs that you can use but i am looking at changing up my thumbnail formats for the future but this isn't really a copy me and steal my creativity this is a here is an idea and you guys should work around it and find your own style of thumbnail as well Thumbnails are actually super important, I think, for your videos that I don't know how important they are because, I mean, personally, I don't look at thumbnails a lot. Let me know in the comments below how much you guys look at thumbnails to decide the video that you look at. I think it really depends on what I'm looking for, but I think having a custom thumbnail is totally, definitely important. Taking just like a screenshot or like it letting YouTube decide the thumbnail just isn't the way to go in my own opinion. Even if you just take a star stable screenshot which relates to the video or something then I think that's just a whole lot better than having YouTube decide like a frame from your video for you. So let's just get into the custom thumbnail making thing. So first things first, I should explain that to be able to uh, import a custom thumbnail, you have to have verified your YouTube channel with a phone number. I can't actually remember how to do this because I did this on my uh, YouTube channel about like six years ago, seven years ago. And then on my Just Another Pixel More, my second gaming channel, which you guys should go subscribe to if you aren't already. I think it might just be an option in settings, but yeah, you just have to verify your account using a phone number. You do need a phone number for this. Maybe if you don't have a phone, ask your parents if you can just verify your YouTube account. You can verify three YouTube channels on the one phone number, to my knowledge. That could be like a five-year-old rule. I haven't looked into it recently, but that's just the last thing I heard, so I'm sorry if that's incorrect, but... Yeah, once you've verified your account, then you're all set to make custom thumbnails, so... This is basically the rule that I have for, like, any of the uh, thumbnails that I do take. I'm like, this thumbnail is a little harder because, like, I'm not really in Star Stable. I'm showing you a tutorial on Photoshop. But what I usually do is if it relates to the video, then I choose a location, choose a horse, choose an outfit. Usually I just use the same horse and outfit that I wear in the video. And then I find a location that I feel fits it. Honestly, I'm liking the purple of this tent with the purple in my outfit, like purpley pinkish, pinkish, pinkish color. But otherwise, like there's so many locations on the map and I think Golden Hills Valley is a true beautiful place to take thumbnail pictures. I'm like kind of a big fan of choosing more open areas for pictures. It looks a little less busy, but it totally depends on, you know, what it is because I take pictures in the wildwood sometimes as well. But my number one thing that I usually do in my thumbnails is I have some sort of movement. This, you, oh no, not that. Wait, wait, wait. Doing something like this, I don't usually have my thumbnails of. I mean, you can because this is like a perfectly fine picture. Like, I'm going to do it anyways. Just like, this is one example. This does look good. I actually really like this picture. You are not proving my point right now. Anyways, what I do in Star Stable is all I do is I turn up the brightness, the contrast, and the saturation just a little bit for each of them. And I make sure it's like direct lighting on the face the middle of the day sometimes doesn't have direct lighting on the face depending where the sun is in star stable star stable has lighting talents i know right you have to think about lighting in a video game that's basically all i do i don't add any filters i leave it as is and i just take the picture most of the time in my thumbnails i've got some sort of movement either the horse is walking forwards like so and i try to make sure that there's a clean shot no flowers in the way directly we do the same thing up just a little bit so it looks good take the picture sometimes i do a bit of a rearing one but rearing ones aren't my favorite but that's totally personal opinion oh my gosh 
Otherwise, I usually stick to trotting or walking. If the horse has a special move, sometimes I do that. But I think, um, or we do backing up ones. I think some of the horses have really photogenic features, especially like English thoroughbreds and newer horses. Like you can see that they're just a little more photogenic when they're standing still. So we're also gonna take this picture. Sometimes I take a few, sometimes just the first picture I take, I know it's the one, but you just do a few or you can get off the horse, take some photos like that. Another thing that I utilize a little bit is also uh, the emoticon things. So for this one, I might be like, I'm making the thumbnail for this video so you guys will know the thumbnail that I'm making, but it's like, how do you make a thumbnail? So I might do like the ask one and <laughs> she looks like she's singing or something, but we can do something like that just to add something to the video. Oh gosh, we're struggling a little bit. There we go. And now that we've got our options, I think we'll like jump over to Photoshop and I'll run through how I use Photoshop with you guys. All right, to find a Photoshop, let's just search up Adobe Photoshop. And once again, it is a paid product. I get it free through my school, so I'm very thankful for that. But when I leave school, a lot of universities also do free like I don't know, they partner with Adobe to give students free access to all of the Adobe programs. But Photoshop alone is 30 Australian dollars a month. That's around $20 USD. Or you can get Lightroom and Photoshop for only $15 a month. That is a bargain to me. That's actually really good. For me, I use Photoshop Premiere Pro. I use After Effects all of the time. So honestly, these prices are very worthwhile for me. It's pretty cheap for me I thought it would be like a hundred dollars a month so that's really good for me I haven't used Lightroom before but I know a lot of people like using Lightroom because it can have overlay effects and I want to kind of play around with that in the future and um, maybe do Lightroom presets for you guys but we'll right now all I use is Photoshop so let's go ahead and launch Photoshop for you guys I use okay whilst Photoshop is loading it doesn't actually take that long but like that's a cool segue what I have is I just searched up Star Stable logo and then I just got the first one which is a PNG. I actually don't know what one it is here but I just got the Star Stable logo. I'm pretty sure I have this one here. You guys the OG logo. It's so sad. But then in here you can see that I use it all the time. So I've got the logo 2016 here in my Photoshop. Yours will be completely blank but what I usually do is I click on open and then you nav navigate to Star Stable online screenshots. Scroll right down to the bottom wherever it is and I import all of the pictures that I took for this thumbnail. Then we open them all up and they'll all open in like a different tab as you guys can see here. And I basically go through and find the one that I like the most. I'm already going to take this one out. I don't really like the composition. This is just like if I look at it and I don't like it immediately then I usually just take it out. I'm not liking the look of this one either. It's honestly between these two, but I think I'm going to go with this one right here. Now what I do is I go ahead and I open up my logo that I installed. It is in my recent opens, but you guys will just find it by clicking file and then open and you open it up. Now I take the selection school tool. I don't have the shortcuts for Photoshop. I'm going to be honest. Okay, it's M. That's a little weird, but I honestly just click on them super easy not a professional photoshop person definitely do very basic stuff in photoshop compared to what i do in after effects and premiere pro so this is a very beginner or beginner tutorial but actually i say that but i've done a class um at school in photoshop but anyways i actually lied to you guys <laughs> this tool that i select first is actually the the fourth one down it's called the quick selection tool and all I have to do is make sure you clicked on the plus button up here. All I have to do is I click and hold in the pink areas. Sometimes you just have to click. And it basically is just highlighting the all the pink parts of the logo. Make sure you've highlighted all of the inside. This is how I change the color of the logo. This might not be the best way, but this is what I found is the best way to like for me on how to do it. Then I basically click Control C to copy what I have selected and then I go over to the image. I click Control V and as you guys can see, it has only pasted the color, which is not actually what I want. What I want to do is then go back to your logo, click the selection tool, the Macrima, the yeah, Mark, Mark you tool, I don't know. And highlight all of the logo this time click ctrl c and click ctrl v now i've got it all i'll explain why i have to do that in just a second 
basically now you've got two layers and you want to come over to your layer panel down in the bottom right make sure that the one with the white outline the full logo is placed underneath the one with just the pink now what you can do is you can click on fx down the bottom and I'm actually going to highlight them both. Okay, click on your layer one and shift and then click layer two. And then you can go ahead and move them together. So they're nice and together. You can also click control T. Control T opens up the transformation tool so you can make things bigger, smaller, put them on a tilt. I usually don't tilt the logo just because... I like to just have nice flat logo. Sometimes I do, I can't remember times that I have in my recent thumbnails, but that is what I do. You also don't have to add the Star Stable logo if you don't want to. Now what I do is I select just layer one, which is just the pink highlighted part of the logo. And then you click the FX button down the bottom and I go up to gradient overlay. And as you guys can see, as an overlay, this is from my last video, but if you click on the gradient color, then it opens this up and you click on the two colors and then you choose two uh, colors that I want to highlight in the picture. I would do pink, but I think that pink is very much right now, but I've just seen the blue and I think I might do the blue gradient. I just like to gradient the, I just like to gradient it, even if it's like a little gradient like this, but I think it looks a little bit nicer. If you don't want a gradient, all you can do is you go up to image adjustments, go down to hue and saturation and then click the little colorize button and then you can just, it's not working because I've got a gradient on it. If you go up to image adjustments, hue and saturation, then click colorize, then it will just color it all blank. You can turn up saturation. This is a little bit harder to like get the perfect color that you want, but this is just how I do it. There's probably a better way, but as I said before, I use the gradient overlay. Now we have this little pink thing here because if I did not have just the pink side of the logo, then if I added my gradient effect to just the logo, as you guys can see, it blanks out the entire logo. So because I use gradients, I have to use the pink inner thing. If you are just make, gonna make it blank, then you don't need to. As I guys, as I will show you guys, just go image adjustments, human saturation with just like your one white outline star stable logo and you can click colorize and just change the color. The only thing that happens is if you turn up the lightness or no, it's the darkness. If you turn down the darkness, you can see that the white goes away. That might be your aesthetic. That's just not my aesthetic. I don't know, but I like gradient, so I use a gradient. And now what I do is on my gradient layer, just the pink text, I go FX, and then I go up to stroke. Now I have mine set to about 10, but I do this just if I have no stroke, then you guys can kind of see that there's just like a little bit of pink around the outside. I don't like that, so I use a stroke to get rid of it. Kind of blends it in a little bit, it's not perfect, but thumbnails aren't seen too much by people so it doesn't matter too much as in they're not going to zoom in super close to my thumbnail and see that the lines aren't perfect in my star stable logo the next thing that i do is i click on the second layer this is the layer of my entire logo and then I click on FX and then I click on drop shadow and then I play around with these. I usually keep the distance like a little closer so it goes around the entire thing. This is just how I do it. I have my spread a little bit higher and then I just bring out my size. Sometimes then I have to bring the spread in if it's a little bit too much. But this kind of just breaks the logo from the background. Next thing I do is I click on the background layer. This is your star stable image. I unlock it just because sometimes I like to do that. I come over here and I select the dodge tool. If you click and highlight, then there might be the burn tool. The burn tool makes it darker, but we want to make it lighter again. So I use the dodge tool just to make everything a bit lighter. You could do this in star stable, but I find it's a little bit weird in star stable. So I just lighten everything up. This is just a personal choice once more. You don't have to do that. Then I click to the one above called the blur tool, the sharpen tool, smudge tool. I use the blur tool and I just blur out the background. This doesn't have to be perfect. As you guys can see, I just do a quick rough run around of the background. This just kind of brings the focus more into the horse once more. So it isn't the most important step. As you guys can see, it's not like super, super blurred, but I feel like it adds a little bit of something. 
if you do want it to be super super blurred then go ahead and click your quick selection tool once more and then just go ahead and highlight your horse i mean if you guys want to do like the background then i guess you do have to make it a little bit more perfect once you have finished highlighting something and if you find out that look it's highlighted part of the legs that i don't want you just have to go up to the minus tool up in the top left and then you just have to click and minimize everything that you don't want in your selection and it's uh gotten rid of legs so i just have to go back to the plus tool so i can highlight the legs again back to the minus tool get rid of that pink click ctrl c and ctrl v now you've got a layer of just your horse it's not perfect let me just fix that up i'm just gonna create a new layer for just the fingers because we missed them make sure we're on the right layer good control c and v and now that looks okay now on your bottom layer with the entire picture you can go up to filter down to blur and you can click any of these blur options i'm just going to use the gaussian blur you can make it super blurry i'm not a big fan of the super blurry background you can make it slightly more blurry like this but Honestly, I like how I do my backgrounds with just a little bit of blur. Since this is a Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to go back onto Google and I'm going to type in Photoshop logo. And I'm going to find one which is a PNG like this one right here. Or we could use this one. I think I'm going to use this one. Click save image as and save it. I just save it to uh, downloads because easy to find. I'm not that organized. Open up Photoshop. Get your... Uh, marquee tool highlight it all click ctrl c click ctrl v and then click ctrl t and you can size it down and i'm just gonna like put this here or something like so since the blues are slightly different i think what i might want to do if i do gradient overlay it's gonna get rid of it all i think what i might do is go into image adjustments hue and saturation maybe colorize and make it a bit more of a blue which matches what i've got going on above maybe something like that i think that might look a little bit better maybe something like that it match matches just like slightly better i'm gonna go ahead and add a stroke to it as well fx up to stroke okay fx drop shadow just to separate it from the background once more i want a little bit more shadow on this one just because i think it might look better because each thing that you add has a slightly different like shadow to it so i'm just going to bring the stroke up a bit more so you can see the shadow a little bit now to add text to my thumbnail i go down to the rectangle tool and i just draw a box up here you can see fill i'm going to make this white i don't know why it's not white something i was playing with before i have a stroke but you can also click on the stroke button and just get rid of the stroke altogether but for some reason i just keep the stroke i don't know why it's just that's how i've always done it then i just draw a rectangle thing down here and then i click on the text tool right here and i type my thumbnail i'm gonna say i'm gonna say thumbnail tutorial now i'm gonna drag it down over the white click ctrl t and drag each end to the edge of my screen just so it's nice and big now you can see that it kind of blends in too much you can't really read it so i'm gonna add a stroke strokes are my favorite thing in the world i'm gonna make this one a little bigger i think and it defaults uh, photoshop defaults to my text font size text font but you can have whatever font you want i'm then going to add a drop shadow for this drop shadow what i like to do is i bring the distance out a bit further and i bring the size down a bit more so it's a little more like solid and then i do the gradient overlay i match the gradient of the text to the gradient of the star stable logo the final thing that I like to do is on my rectangle, I add a, whoops, not an outer glow. I add a drop shadow and I bring the distance once again back in, bring up the size. And there we go. That is my thumbnail tutorial. It's not the best. I then play around with things to make sure it looks all right. But that is how I make my thumbnails. Nothing too special to export it. I go up to file. I go to export, export as. I make sure that it's set to JPEG or JPG, quality 100%. Now your image size, your image size doesn't matter, but you have to make sure that your file size is under like 8 megabytes or something. So because my screen is 4K, I take 
uh, Star Stable takes screenshots and photos at 4K. So I bring the width down to 1920 by 1080, which is 1080p. Quality of images, like you don't want to go like 480p or something, but 1920 by 1080 is good. Whoops, that is, my fingers were not on the right position. 1920 by 1080, it changes for me. Um, yours might already be 1920 by 1080, and if so, then leave it like that. You don't want to go any smaller. I just found that actually uploading 4K thumbnail photos was too big. Um, thumbna uh, YouTube kept telling me that my thumbnails were too big in size, so I just brought it down to 1920 by 1080. And then you just click export, and I save it to an entire folder, which is every single thumbnail that I have made since getting this computer which is pretty crazy i should probably clean it out but like it's kind of nostalgic and i'm gonna name it how to thumbnail and well bam you've now got your thumbnail i'm going to show you guys how to upload a thumbnail now since i'm not uploading a video i'm just gonna go to an existing video but whilst you're uploading it or just on an existing video if you go down to thumbnail i've already got one but you can basically Add your own one and it'll say like add custom thumbnail you want to click on that and it'll open up your folder here since i've got so many folders here i just type in how to thumbnail and it comes up and i just click open and that'll upload your thumbnail i'm not going to change this thumbnail because i don't want to but that is how you upload your thumbnail to your video that is it for this tutorial it honestly took longer than i thought it would it takes me literally like five to ten minutes to actually make my thumbnails but when i'm explaining it to you guys it takes a little bit longer let me know if you have like anything that i should change about my thumbnails i am thinking of using lightroom once again maybe adding some lightroom presets for you guys so let me know if you want me to do that but if you did enjoy this video then make sure you subscribe i'm just gonna go get this bee bomb Make sure you subscribe because next week I'm going to be showing you guys a tutorial on either how I make my intro or how I stream. I think I'm going to do how I make my intro. Let me know anything else you want to know about being a Star Stable YouTuber, like maybe my upload presets, things like that, like how I title, how I description, how I tag, things like that. Let me know if you want to see that. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe once again because those are both free ways of supporting me in the videos that I make every single day. But I hope you guys are having an awesome day or have had an awesome day and I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye!